What can the producers at Fox TV be thinking of when they introduce a character like King Cooper to television? This green monster is frightening for small children, and the dirty underwear segment of the program is disgusting. My children will be watching Nickelodeon until King Cooper is removed. Today, I want to tell you about a TV show called King Cooper's Cool Cartoons. It ran for 65 episodes during 1989, and rather than featuring Mario, the main character was instead Bowser, or as he was known in the show, King Cooper. As you can see, the show itself is actually not a cartoon at all, it's live action. I'll explain why it's called King Cooper's Cool Cartoons in a bit, but for now, what you need to know is that this show was kind of a disaster. The guy playing Bowser had to be fired for poor behaviour on set, parents started writing in with complaints that King Cooper was scaring kids, and finally, the show was cancelled because of a complaint from the head of Disney. Let's talk about King Cooper's cool cartoons, the Mario TV show that made parents angry. So I first found out about King Cooper's cool cartoons because someone I know is actually working on preserving it right now. The show is mostly lost to time, only a few brief clips of King Cooper's cool cartoons exist on the internet right now. But what was this show? Well, it's what is known as a wraparound program. In other words, King Cooper's cool cartoons was a little bit like a sandwich. King Cooper would introduce himself, then a totally different show would start playing, and finally, King Cooper would return to wrap things up. Now, like I said, no full episodes have been recovered yet, but using the short clips of the show that do exist online, we can piece together what a full episode of this TV show might have looked like. Roll tape. Who calls you an So, the show's opening featured King Cooper roaming the streets of Los Angeles while crowds of children cheered him on. This opening song is very of its era, and it wraps up with the slightly scarily delivered line, It's my show now. It's my show now! So, then King Cooper enters the studio, where an audience of 40 to 60 local children cheer him on. They're wearing Cooper Trooper hats and these t shirts which say Cooper's Troopers on them. The kids in the audience actually got to take these t shirts home with them, which is why we can get a pretty good look at what they look like. So, each episode opens with King Cooper performing some kind of comedy skit. In this particular episode, King Cooper watches a puppet show put on by two different vegetables. The vegetables discuss who is the healthiest, when King Cooper comes along all of a sudden with a pair of scissors and starts cutting the vegetables to pieces. Brutal. <laughs> then, after the skit wraps up, King Cooper leads into the next segment, which is a totally unrelated TV show. Going back to my sandwich analogy, this part is like the filling of the sandwich. So, King Cooper would announce to viewers at home to stay tuned. Now watch this wonderful thing. And then this totally unrelated TV program would start playing. In the case of King Cooper's cool cartoons, this other show was usually a public domain cartoon. That is to say, a cartoon that is so old that its copyright has long expired, which means that TV stations can air the cartoon without having to pay any money. Then, finally, the cartoon would end and King Cooper would reappear to wrap up the show. That's the basic format of a single episode of King Cooper's cool cartoons. So, what were the problems the show ran into, then? Well, first of all, kids didn't seem to like King Cooper. If you remember the letter I read out at the start of the video, one mother wrote, What can the producers at Fox TV be thinking of when they introduce a character like King Cooper to television? This green monster is frightening for small children. But the problems didn't stop with what you could see outside of the suit. In fact, the man inside the Cooper costume, a comedian called Christopher Collins, caused a lot more issues. Now, Collins died back in 1994, so we can't hear his side of the story, but according to staff who worked on the show, 
Collins was frequently difficult to work with, to say the least. During the recording of one episode, it's claimed that Collins called out to a group of African-American kids in the audience and said on live television, where are you kids from? Biafra or something? And it wasn't just blatant racism, it's alleged that Collins also regularly made sexual comments to female members of the production staff. However, there was one other event that served as the final straw and got Christopher Collins fired. During the closing credits of a particular episode, sweets were dropped into the audience for kids to grab. And that particular day, Christopher Collins' young son was in the audience. After the sweets got dropped, the kids all scrambled to grab as many sweets as they could, which led to Collins' son becoming overwhelmed by all the other children. According to one of the show's producers, he leapt into the young audience yelling at everyone. We fired him and replaced him with another actor. To be honest, Christopher Collins' behaviour here is much more sympathetic than during any of his other incidents, but I'd imagine this was a straw that broke the camel's back situation. His erratic and offensive behaviour on and off screen grew too hard to put up with. In 2021, comedian Mark Maron described Collins as just like this monster, like he was a drugs and booze and weird and just creepy. And everybody else here is a comedian. But that's not what I am. What I am is a psychotic who's learned to market his problem. So, after firing Christopher Collins, production staff hired Patrick Pinney to take over the role of King Cooper, who you probably know best as the guy who recorded this. Are you ready, kids? I can't hear you! Now, by all accounts, Patrick Pinney is a perfectly nice guy, and episodes continued being recorded without many hitches. However, some kids watching the show noticed this change in actors and weren't super happy. According to a writer on the show, I remember one kid calling in to say that Cooper was an imposter. But this change in actors wasn't the thing that killed King Cooper's cool cartoons. In fact, According to production staff, the show had really high viewership. No, the real reason for the show's cancellation is something that no one could have expected. Here's a quote from the show's producer, Christopher Bruff. The show ranked number one in its time period, garnered an Emmy nomination, and received in excess of 55,000 pieces of mail over the 13 weeks it aired. It was cancelled despite hit ratings due in part to a letter written by the president of Disney to Barry Diller, then president of 20th Century Fox, complaining about the show undermining the morals of its live, youthful audiences. I kid you not. So, let's walk through what he said. The actual reason that King Cooper's Cool Cartoons was cancelled was apparently because the CEO of Disney, Michael Eisner, wrote a letter to the CEO of 20th Century Fox, Barry Diller, complaining that King Cooper's Cool Cartoons was damaging children and their morals. That is unbelievable. <laughs> now, to be extra super clear, I have no way of confirming that story with the ex-CEOs of Disney and 20th Century Fox, but the story would explain why King Cooper's Cool Cartoons was suddenly yanked off air in spite of its high popularity. But the most mysterious part of this whole story is still to come, because it's about what happened to the show after its cancellation. There were 65 episodes of King Cooper's Cool Cartoons broadcast back in the 80s, so surely some of those episodes are available online, right? Nope, not a single full episode of King Cooper's Cool Cartoons exists on the internet, only a few very brief snippets from a handful of episodes. In fact, in the early 2000s, some people considered this show just a hoax. It was so strange sounding. Which is why I need your help. So far, none of the show's creators have been able to upload a full episode of this show to the internet, which means the job falls to us, the general public. Now, most people watching this video won't be able to help. For a start, if you're not from America, this show wasn't broadcast to you. And that includes me, too. In fact, if you're not from California, then you likely never came across this show. 
But if you lived in California in late 1989, and you think there's a chance that you might have an old VHS tape lying around with footage of King Cooper's cool cartoons on it, then please do publish that footage online. Even a short video clip of the show would help restoration efforts a ton. Plus, if you have memories of the show growing up, then leave them in the comments down below. I think it will be interesting to read through. So for now, that's the end of the story. But I really hope that in six months or a year or two years, even more of this bizarre chapter of Nintendo's history will have been uncovered. A huge thanks to everyone from the King Cooper's Cool Cartoons Discord server for digging up so much of the info from this video. And be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, as I make videos about strange stories from Nintendo's history every single week. Bye!